morning, welcome to Africa Sportsman Show. I'm standing here with Thomas Dreyer. Um, a, a, a funny connection, Thomas's dad, Uncle Tom and my dad, Flip, uh, they used to study together at Poch of Stroom um, many, many moons ago. So uh, that's how we we, uh, we met each other a couple of years ago. And yeah, for the first time, Thomas, thanks for having, having me on your property in the very, very dry Limpopo province. No, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It is a little bit drier than the usual time of the year. Yeah. No, it's, it is very dry, Stefan. It is um, at this stage. It's getting quite worrying about when... Yeah, driving up here, yeah. I mean, you could see it's... Uh, but still, you know, um, we, we talked about it last night. Private ownership, you know, makes... The, the guys manage, manage, um, you know, every each to its own. They, they try and manage the area that they that they own in such a manner that next time, uh, next year, this time, there'll, there'll still be animals. So just yeah. explain to us this week, what are we going to do? It's a special week for me. <laughs> Stefan, this week we're going to look for a sable for you um it's become one of the more an one of the animals that's cut 15 to 20 years ago there were almost none in this area yeah about 30 years ago there were almost nothing in south africa and uh, farm owners and private breeders bred them back to where their numbers are actually at such a stage where us as south africans not only the elite but the normal South African guy or there's a, a foreign client that has got that's just your normal average joke can actually afford to shoot one. Yeah, many years ago it was a it was it was quite an expensive hunt because of Very, the numbers. Yeah. So it, it's getting more affordable, you know, like you yeah. say, not only for the overseas guys but for the yeah. local market as well. So yeah, so this week we're gonna look at we have a couple of sable here. We've been breeding them for a while. Um, we've actually broken down all our breeding camps, everything is open area now. So there is a couple of bulls, actually a lot of them. Some older ones, some younger ones, some bigger, some smaller. So we're just gonna go out and see what we get, yeah. what's available, yeah, what we see. I think and we'll, we'll see a nice, and we'll try and get a nice, yeah. and proper think, big age, old sale. I think age is for me is the number one yeah. thing. You know, the, the older the yeah. older bull you can get, I mean, it, it, it just means that the chances are better that it's past its prime and you know done its yeah. job. So um, yeah, the older bull we can get, but then again. It's not shopping, it is hunting, so <laughs> you also, we also yeah. uh, take your chances what you get. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that is also special because you said you you brought something special with that you want to hunt with. Yeah, yeah so I, brought a, <coughs> I brought my Wernicker on in a 500 Nitro, so I've been hunting been hunting with a double for the last couple of years extensively. And um, yeah, very recently switched over to the Wernicker on brand and uh, yeah, very, very excited to, uh, to try it out on the Sable. So we need to get close, we need to get... I would reckon if we can get closer than, than 80, 90 yards, 80 meters, I think that'll that'll still be. Uh, yeah, we can try. If we can get within that within within that reach, then. Uh, then we'll Might make take it. time, but I think we'll manage. Yeah, time yeah. time is what we have, and let's hope this cloud cover stays here for a while. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> right, let's That's move. Yeah. Good, Stefan. We've driven around a bit. We saw a couple of bulls. Saw two bulls that look worth to go look after. Walk off them. Let's walk a bit and see. They are in a herd. They are heading away from the water. They drank water already this morning, so yeah. they are heading away. Let's go and see. The wind is dead quiet. Yeah. There's no wind, so. Yeah. It's gonna. It might. Uh, there's about seven bulls walking in this herd, so we're gonna have to try and sneak up because yeah. there, I mean, there's a lot of eyes and ears. So let's see. They'll, We'll see if we can get something. If not, we look further. Yeah, perfect. Let's yes, you see that we're we'll, we'll from us. Yeah. Just walk in. Uh, a bull. Got a 
Less of body. And he's a couple of bulls, Thomas. Thomas, how do you de uh, determine from this distance the age difference? Do you look at the horns or do you look at the skin color or do you look at body size? What um, is the. It's different. There's a couple of stuff you can look at. Um, normally, with a sable, when they go past about seven years old, they develop a post growth. Yeah, what we call them, you know, that, that secondary, secondary growth yeah. on the base of the horns. Okay. If, you, if they start to make that, you know it's an old bull. Okay. And, <coughs> sorry, you'll see where the older bulls, you'll see, if you see, shoot one now, you'll see, they develop like a Roman load, like the buffalo do as well. That, that's all signs of old age. Okay. Um, and the skin color, it's hard because once, from about four years old, they start to turn pitch black. Okay. So it's quite, they, I mean, they can only go black. They can't go darker black than black. So, so, so when you see a lighter color bull, you know it's a yeah, young. Yeah. I mean, that's a given. Yeah. But so, so the color difference between a four or five year old sable and an eight year old sable, it will be impossible to tell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in, in some differences, you do get some of them that on the rump, they still stay a bit brown and they only develop a lot later. But other bulls, like I said, in four years, they go pitch black. So, yeah, okay. so okay. I look at the horn, the second growth, and that Roman And then in body size, I mean, an old animal, 90% yeah. of the time, has got a bigger, stockier yeah. body than a younger bull. But I think let's work our way there so we don't shoot directly into the sun because it looks like they're veering off their way. Yeah, okay. So we just line ourselves up. shot a sable yet. This is my first time. So um yeah quite exciting and, and you know it, it, it's totally new for me. So I'm completely in Thomas's hands here. Look at that sable bull that's walking in from the right. Look at his mane. And then you look at the the sable bull that's to the left, the bigger bull at the back. Do you see it? the one at the back is the good brown hair? This one's all pitch black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I told you, some of them. And they're the exact same age. Okay. So some of them turn black a lot quicker than others. Okay. size and color is absolutely beautiful.
Just wait for it to turn, for it to turn broadside. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Okay, it's turning. Okay. <laughs> yes. As I was about to squeeze the trigger, he looked at us. <laughs> I don't know if, I, if it helped to hold my breath, but <laughs> did that for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Bosses, huh? oh. I mean, this is um, this is exactly what we were looking for, you know, in terms of that secondary on growth. It's an absolutely massive animal body-wise. He's pitch black, um, and this is exactly the animals, you know, that we like to target. This this thing has done its job. I mean, he's he's what eight eight plus years old. Yeah, I think it's closer to ten. Um, he, mean, he's done his part in a herd yeah. many years ago, and the only value that this animal has got left, you know, for a guy like yourself. Is a trophy value, you know, for a hunter. There's a lot of meat to consume as well. That's going to happen in your camp. Um, so this is where the this is where the the last value of this animal lies. Yeah, is, is, is in hunting it. It is. It's. I mean, Stefan, if you look at this animal, I mean, look at this. Except for the length of the horn, look at this. We call this secondary growth or post growth. The older they get, the slower the horn grows. Like you can see here, it was still a young bull. The ridges are further apart and it starts getting less and less and less and less until there was almost one solid horn. Yeah. So I mean if you, and that's what I told you when we were hunting them, when we started trying to pick out the herd of yeah. the bull that we wanted to shoot. This is one of the first characteristics solid, solid to, cali to cali look at, yeah. to that, try that and figure know. out whether it's an old bull or not. Yeah. Before you look at the teeth, before you look at the body size, this is cows has it, I've got them and the bulls got them and like this bull, I mean, you can look at him with all these marks. This bull has been fighting and, I mean, he's already starting to lose hair in his neck. So, I mean, it's, it's, this bull is really past his prime. Yeah. And it's true what you said. I mean, the, if the last consumer is the hunter in, in this industry that we are in. Yes. And it's a beautiful bull. Yeah, this I mean, is a beautiful bull. You shot bull. yourself an, an incredible sable. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it's nice being part of a... Of a you know, the model like this that we have in South Africa that works and it works well and yeah, it was a great privilege. Yeah, Thank you very much. much. Thomas, thanks again. Uh, we took some lovely uh, trophy pictures. I wanted to ask you something earlier. Um, the sable, swart wit pens in Afrikaans, the sable, you know, has been in, in a lot of discussion points over the last few years um, as a sought after trophy animal. Why is it that 30, 40 years ago you didn't see any sable? I mean, what, what was the reason? You always saw kudu and you saw impala and you, you know, waterbok and whatever, but the sable was on the brink of extinction. Why is that? Stefan, in my opinion, first main reason was because they were in competition with cattle. Okay. Because remember, if you take seven years ago, ten years ago, let's take, let's go back ten years ago, venison or game meat wasn't as popular as it is nowadays. I mean, if you think of your dad and my dad, they used to live off lamb yeah. and beef. That's it. Cattle. That that was. They farmed cattle. They farmed lamb. So, because sable is a hundred percent grazer, and they're very selective grazers. They'll so they won't eat in a hundred hectare pasture for argument's sake and stay there. They'll move and they need big area. So they literally ate the grass that the cattle were supposed to feed on. And, and the, the, the cattle had a much higher value. Yeah, because everybody ate beef and lamb. That's it. And the other reason, in the other parts of Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Angola, um, Botswana, Mozambique, they were hunted for their meat. 
because in my opinion I think sable is probably the most delicious meat that you can get um, game meat and like if you take Ang Angola in the Angolan war they used to shoot the sable for ration for camp meat yeah. and if you talk to anybody that hunts S southern Africa which in Zimbabwe all those places the most sought after meat that they use for camp meat is sable so okay. that and being in um, in, co in competition, in with, competition the with the cattle I think was the two main reasons the third one I think is just area because they prefer vast areas because they're selective grazers when the game farmers started putting up game fences they couldn't move where they wanted to move so I think drought a little bit but I think the, and the farmers started shooting them and yeah. yeah I think that's the three main reasons why they went almost to extinction well Thomas you know to sum it up um, the South African model that we created you know let, lets us hand, hunt these animals um, and therefore they'll be here for many years to come I mean the hunters dollars that goes back into an animal like this, you know, is, is not only protecting the species, you know, giving it value for, for a farmer to keep farming and, and having these animals, but not only that, what we often overlook is is a huge part of that, of those dollars, not maybe directly as in form of a note, but, but, but this goes back into, I mean, there's a couple of families living off this piece of land, and I mean, taking this area as well, you know, of, of other guys like yourself, you know, as 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 an outfitting business as a main source of income. So all 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 in all, I mean, this is this is what con conservation is all about. I mean, not not only protecting the species, but uh, uplifting the the community around you and the families families involved in this hunting industry. Thank you very much. It's been a real real pr privilege. Pleasure.